go, and you, you know, you set boundaries, and then you find out that they're now telling you how you can conduct yourself, and it's like, okay, wait a minute, what, what, what happened to the roles? <laughs> the role switch. But anyway, that's the wonderful thing about it, because really what it does is just let you know that you've done a good job. You know, we start to mimic what you have instilled in them. Can you agree? <laughs> and so the confidence, and the, we know that confidence and self-esteem is something um, that women battle with sometimes. And so it really starts, we're teachers, you know, we're teachers and it really starts from, as we raise them, we model confidence and self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I would say definitely to piggyback off what you said as far as being a model and example. Um, your children watch you um, from when they're two and up. So even though we may not be able to say everything when we're little, we have a lot of memories. A lot of things that affect us as adults are from our childhood. So the positive as well as the negative. So just you being a role model and seeing things, um, growing up and seeing you do certain things or carry yourself a certain way or even coping with certain situations. Um, I remember all of that. And now that I'm older, I see a lot of my mom and myself, the things I say, the things I do. Um, and then just hearing other people who, who have always told me since I was little, your mom raised you well, she did good. And so that also, it makes me proud of myself, um, but it's also just a reflection of uh, how it's raised. So, yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I really want to kind of touch on is how, you know, girls and women, when we share in common our femininity, we should embrace our femininity because some of us are losing that today. Yeah. But that's power in femininity. That's right. And it's power in being nurturing. Yeah. And when they learn to be nurturing as, you know, as girls and young women, they know how to be nurturing as wives and mothers. And so I always believe sometimes you got to go back to the old landmark, mm -hmm. you know, to teach them, you know, the right way to do all of that. Because if they don't have the tools, and we see a lot of that today, some women just don't have the tools for different reasons. Maybe they didn't have a mother. You know, different things happen in life. And so we never really got to get those two. So not only being a good mother to our daughters is great, but I think just being mothers again in our communities, the church, the places that we live, that we exemplify that, the nurturing and the femininity, and then teaching our daughters how to be in touch with their emotions is so important. So they can always be in, learn how to be in a state of emotional regulation. It's so important, and um, I don't know if you want to touch on that too as well, but I try my best to model as much as I can. And we got to know none of us are perfect. So you know, the good thing about being in Christ, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So he gives us opportunity to do it again, you know, and we teach our daughters, and I know about you, but I teach, teach my daughter that, you know, we make mistakes too as parents. You know, so they won't grow up and go and stop pointing the fingers. Like we, you know, we we wasn't given a handbook. We learn. It's really a learning on the job. You know, responsibility. And so I always try to communicate that to her that we make mistakes too. And one of the most important things to have in the mother daughter or any parent child relationship is grace. Yes. Yes. Grace. Yeah. As far as the nurturing with um, the emotions that we have. I find myself um, in situations where I'm independent or, you know, I went away to college or I might have spent a couple months at a time away from my mom. And when I had my own emotional situations, um, I just learned how to cope with it based off of her example. And I find myself giving my friends advice and sometimes I'm like, why well, don't I do my own thing? But here I am telling two or three people how to deal with their things. And I think it's just important that even though we're all gonna have really hard times, we're all gonna have our trials, um, how you cope and deal with everything is gonna change the entire tone. Um, whether you're gonna fall apart and you know, to let, let everyone know, you know, what was me and, and this is what's happening, but you can't let your circumstance and your situation be the tone of your life and be the tone of how you carry yourself every day because we all know we're gonna go through, but how you handle it, how you deal with it, and how you respond to other people, they are watching you, believe it or not. Um, so definitely nurturing that femininity um, and learning that it's okay to be nurturing. God gave that to us. Um, so not to create a hard shell, and, you know, you want to be brave and, and you want to be bold and know that you're not to mess with, but also to be nurturing and remember to be gentle because we are ladies. <laughs> Which brings us to our last point about, um, what did I have up there? Oh, the power of a team, just a team mother-daughter relationship of going through things together, and I call that going through storms together. You know, we went through some things together, and my most important thing, and you know, we have to be intentional as parents. Everything we do should have a purpose and some kind of intention. 
And so when we went through stuff, you know, we went through a lot. Like after my divorce, we went through homelessness. We stayed in transitional housing. And in the midst of all that, I tried to build her up. And I would always tell her, this is going to really teach you how to be compassionate about people who go through things. But also, you're going to have some strength. You're going to know how to cope through storms, trials, and tribulations. But I think, that again, today, a lot of people not learning about how to cope. You know, we run to the pill. We run to something, you know, any little situation we have, we run to some kind of substance. And we have to remember to turn to God, you know, in the midst of going through storms and then learning how to cope through stuff. You know, you can't run out of every situation. When you get married, just because things get a little rough, you can't just run and say, well, I'm out of here. You know, we have to learn how to endure. And I think we have to learn, remember to learn how to endure. But that's the powerful thing about being together. When you go through stuff together, you know, you comfort one another, you encourage. And she was my inspiration to keep going, even through that time of being homeless. You know, I went back to school and got my degrees. I didn't have anything. This is in my 30s and 40s, going back to get my GD and just keep kept going. But one of the things is like, you know, our children's like, I've got to do it for her. You know, we got to do it for them. You know, so I just thank God for this opportunity. I just ask God to bless all of you and continue to prosper and be productive in all that you do. Whatever you find your hands to do, that God will make it prosper. Amen. 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 Yeah.